get along with folks is we all come to the positions that we come to sort of intellectually differently, right? We, all of us in this room, are probably fairly progressive in our thoughts, for most of our thoughts. But how I get there is different than how somebody else gets there. So that when we talk about how we get more Democrats elected in rural areas, we have a lot of issues that poor rural folks really agree with, that they really want to see done. But we gotta, we got to put ourselves in their shoes and sort of think through the process from their perspective. It's not that they're poor. And it's not that they're not smart, because they probably are. They just haven't had access to a lot of good education facilities. And they haven't had access to a lot of the benefits that folks in suburban districts do. And we take a lot for granted. So we put ourselves in their perspective, and we sort of like walk through this thing, and we say the things that they can identify with, but at the same time doesn't compromise our position on the thing. We can get a lot done. So that's, as an attorney, that's what I did a lot of. And when it comes to civil litigation and tort reform, which is one of the topics that I've kind of been here to talk about a little bit, that is kind of what attorneys do when we stand up in front of juries and we try to convince a jury to give a person a reward for, or an, an award for damages when they've been harmed by a corporation that's done something bad or by an industry that's kind of rolled over their rights. We have to get that jury to see the world our way. Right? And, and that's 12 different people, just like this room, where you have to sort of begin to figure things out about them and think the way they might think. So when they do things like change the jointer and venue, I have to be able to stand up and talk to these Republicans about why this matters, about why not allowing plaintiffs to join their claims, which is what they've been trying to do, why that's a big deal for constituents that live in Carroll County, Missouri, or live in Cole County, Missouri, because Monsanto started suing a bunch of farmers because wind was blowing pollen from Roundup Ready crops into non-Roundup Ready crops. So Monsanto has all the money in the world, and they want to sue little bitty farmers. These little bitty farmers don't have the money or the insurance to be able to stop this. They go in there and they get sued. They get the filling suit at their teeth sometimes. I mean, these big corporations can really hammer these guys down. So what do, these little, what do the little farmers do? They band together, they pool their money, and that's joinder. When they go to court all together and they have one lawyer and they all pool their money, they join their defense. And the Republicans in the corporate agenda don't want them to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And so my job is to stand up and talk to these rural Republicans that maybe don't know that that's really what's gonna happen, that that's gonna be the effect, and explain it to them. And then they go and they change their bill. They make it a little different. And to be honest with you, they, they did that on the joiner and venue thing. They made it a little bit different, not as different as it should be to make it better. But they allowed defendants to be able to join their claims, and then they sent it over to the Senate where nothing's getting done anyway. So that's kind of a good thing. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that I'm kind of big on is the because I'm the civil litigation and the, the civil justice system is something that's important to me in the legal background. The other thing I'm like sort of proud of is the affiliation that I have with labor and the hard work that the folks at the UAW Hall have done for me in helping me get elected, and all the other labor organizations, including the carpenters and the electricians and everybody that came out to help me, um, because I view their rights in much the same way that I view any other civil right. Individuals have a right to contract. We have a right to form a contract with another person. And all the unions do is they come together and they say, hey, everybody, we all kind of agree, we want to make a contract with this employer. And in that contract, we are going to try to negotiate what is in normal, in business terms, is called a security clause. In other words, if, I'm, if I own a factory and I buy widgets from Billy, Billy can come to me and say, hey, I want to sell you all your widgets, but I want to be the only person to sell you those widgets. And he and I can make that contract. We can have that agreement as, as between businesses. And all a union is, instead of him selling me widgets, he's selling me labor. He's selling me work, right? So he wants that securities contract. Is that my time? No. Okay. I'm done. I'm done. Sorry. No. But they, they want to be able to take away the right of the individuals to come together and make those contracts with their workers. And they do things like pass right to work. And right to work is exactly what that is. It's an infringement on your right to freely contract and to enforce those contracts to the best of your ability. They're, they don't do it in any other business, in any other managerial situation. This, this prohibition on a securities clause in a contract is unheard of in any other aspect. So that's one of the things that we can talk about later. Sometimes that's great.